After he was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus was tried as a criminal before the Roman governor Pontius Pilate. The religious leaders persuaded the crowd to call for him to be executed, even though he was innocent. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Pilate strikes me very, very forcefully in the trial, washing his hands. It's just another criminal. He doesn't recognize something we're talking about on Palm Sunday. He doesn't recognize, he just does. There's a deep fear within him. And somehow the system overcomes the fear. And the system drives him. I find the driving power of systems in big institutions like churches frightening. And that challenges me very profoundly. Well, it can take a lot of courage to, it can take, to stand up and say, actually, this, this is wrong. This is not right. Yeah, this is wrong. No, I'm not going to do this. And we get into cultures which make it almost superhuman to have that courage by yourself. And it needs, that's where the church is so important. It's the church that together encourages, enables people to do the right thing. Which leads me to wonder if we should expect to be surprised by decisions that you make as Archbishop of Canterbury. I look forward and think, oh golly, I will disappoint everyone at some point. And I'll sometimes do it because I'm right, and sometimes do it because I'm wrong. That's absolutely clear. And I'll sometimes take decisions that people think are wrong, but I know something they don't and can't say it. And sometimes just because I'm being dumb, stupid, just doing the wrong thing out of cowardice, ignorance, just sheer sin. That will happen. It's bound to happen. I hope it doesn't happen on anything too important. Um, I think uh, the key decisions are going to be about building, how we build communities of faith that enable human beings to flourish in the love of God and fulfill Jesus' call for them as individuals in their workplace, in their lives, as we see Jesus doing through Holy Week.
The day of Jesus' crucifixion is the most solemn day of the Christian year. It's remembered by different names throughout the world, such as the Holy and Great Friday and Sorrowful Friday. In the English-speaking world, it's Good Friday. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Jesus was crucified between two thieves. The significance of his death became apparent to Justin Welby as a student in Cambridge when one evening in October 1975 he had a conversation with a friend. He explained it to me what Jesus did for me on the cross. This was out of love for me. It was because of me and everyone else, but me. Um, and I suddenly saw this, I saw the grace, the freedom, the free giving of God, which meant that to follow him would not be constraining, but would be the most ultimately liberating thing I could ever do. That's where the cross led me.